We are back with Alex Johnston. He's the CEO of the Connecticut Coalition for Achievement Now, or CONCAN. Alex, thanks for sticking with us. You know, I know that the session was very busy. There were lots of controversial issues, education-related and not. I mean, what were things that you were really banking on? I mean, obviously, aside from first in, last out, or yeah. uh, last in, first out, I should say. Um, other than that, that you were hoping would get addressed and, and just never made it to the table. Yeah, well, we, our campaign this year was called Get Smart, and mm -hmm. there were two things we were really focused on. Staffing smart, which is the issue we just talked about, and spending smart. The idea that uh, it's a little counterintuitive to some, but that in the midst of this fiscal crisis, there's never been a better time for us to fix our approach to school funding in this state. It's fundamentally broken. It's not working across the whole system. Uh, and so we've really been pushing hard on that front. Um, we've been pleased that the governor um, has uh, certainly articulated his own vision uh, that, you know, we, as he said in his budget speech at the outset, we've got to fix this thing once and for all. Mm -hmm. Um, he reiterated that, um, you know, at the end of the session in saying that, you know, 2012 has got to be the session for education reform. We wanted 2011 to be the session <laughs> for education reform, but, um, you know, we're, we're very ready to work with everybody um, to make sure that we, we get the breakthroughs that we need and that we focus on this school funding issue. Uh, and there's a task force now that's been put together to, to take a to take a look at that. So when you talk about funding um, for schools, and some people might automatically think about level funding, which uh, is something that gets debated nationwide. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, uh, I was mentioning to you that last week the Congressional Black Caucus was here in Connecticut at the invitation of Congressman Larson, and they held a panel on closing the achievement gap, and they unanimously um, and, and in unison spoke about um, level funding, which um, is in different forms in different states. Congressman from New Jersey mentioned how it's uh, been used there. I mean, is that what the kind of thing that you're talking about here well, or I think we're, we're talking about shifting to a student based funding system so funding so the students, money follows the kids exactly you're okay. funding students based on their learning needs at the public schools they actually attend and you know I think what what a lot of folks would like to see is actually um, open enrollment statewide so that you could enroll in any public school um, and provided you can get there, and transportation is a big issue, and provided there's space, um, you know, we already have some version of that in the Hartford region with open choice, um, but we don't actually approach that in a way that, that gives districts um, an opportunity to take in more kids because they don't get enough money to actually pay for uh, the services that those kids use, so they can only take a few. Um, and meanwhile, is that, is that in use in other states successfully? Or? Sure. There, I mean, the other thing you've got to remember about Connecticut is we have a lot of tiny districts. Yeah. So go to Charlotte, North Carolina. I mean, the Charlotte School District is a county. And so it's already in effect. There's a system um, that's countywide. Um, in Connecticut, we've got, you know, really small cities and, and suburbs surrounding them, and then we have separate funding systems and separate tax bases for each of those communities. Right, and right. what we end up doing is... Um, we end up paying for some kids twice and other kids we're not paying uh, enough for. So I think the other thing you've got to say is that, um, you know, this idea of level funding or, or adequacy lawsuits, um, there's certainly one going on in Connecticut now. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there is this whole debate about are we paying enough? Um, and that is an important debate. But even before we resolve that debate, we need to look at this issue of um, not actually distributing the funding we do have in a way that makes sense. And wh why is that held up? I mean, is it, uh, why does that not ha happen? Well, I think politically it's a challenging issue. Uh, and if you think about it, it requires gubernatorial leadership uh, because the ECS formula has been around for 20-some years. Mm -hmm. It's been amended legislatively something like 31 times. <clears throat> um, and there are like 12 input variables. You know, well-represented communities can figure out how to tweak those input variables to make sure that their community gets more. Mm -hmm. It takes a vision uh, from the executive branch about fixing that and focusing on students to build the legislative will to make the change that's needed. I mean, don't you think there's also going to be a need to change uh, the public? So, I mean, I think there might be some people who say, um, not that they would want other kids to want, but would say, well, you know, I mean, I work hard. That's why I, I mean, that's why I live in this community. That's why I wanted my kids to go to, to the quote unquote best school system. Right. And I think uh, if we get this right, we're not taking anything away from successful school systems. And if anything, we're in a situation of declining enrollment statewide. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that successful systems are able to attract the students that they need to succeed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and there are folks are across the state who are investing in change at the district level. East Hartford has got an IB school. They're really 
uh, getting in and working to attract kids from across the region, even though there are four interdistrict magnet schools run by CREC in East Hartford. Mm -hmm. So there is a way that this can work both for uh, communities that are hosting schools and folks from other communities. It's not about taking away good schools from some people. It's about giving more, you know, a dynamic flow within the system we have right now. And how hard is that, uh, getting that argument to people who might oppose Funding. Well, look, I think the legislature heard a comprehensive proposal on school finance. The Appropriations Committee um, raised that bill and had a big public hearing, mm -hmm. hundreds of people, about 80 folks testifying in support of that. There is a lot of interest in this question. Uh, I think in this past session, there was so much focus on resolving the budget that, you know, the governor himself said at the outset, critical problem, got to be fixed. We're doing it in 2012. So aside from these two issues that we've talked about, you know, the, as you mentioned, the governor did say that education is going to be the, on the agenda for 2012. Uh, what else are you hoping that he, that he tackles? Well, I think, or they um, tackle? The, you know, there, is, there are lots of ongoing issues um, with how the state manages its data. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we're just not, we're not managing ourselves well. Um, and, uh, you know, we need things like a common chart of accounts so right. that every school district's books are kept in the same way. Everyone can see where the money goes. These things are going to be critical in a time of scarce resources to build the public support that we need for the smart investments that actually get returns. Right. It is definitely difficult um, when people are talking about budgets and uh, increased taxes to, to kind of get the details out like for things like this. Yeah. We appreciate it. Thanks again to Alex Johnston so much, of uh, ConCan for being here. You have a lot of work. We wish you good luck. Thank you. Coming up, more school talk now with parents and students who are working towards success in the capital city.